Last week, I fitted this light bar to my Volkswagen Transporter using these brackets. And as part of the very same install, I showed you one of these. This is a cable gland from Scanstrut. This is the perfect way to take a cable from the inside of the van to the outside. If you scroll through the comments, you will see that this light bar and these brackets left you guys in a bit of a split decision. What was unanimous? What was a total landslide? Was that Scanstrut? That cable gland stole the show. You guys loved it. This is not a video all about glands. Because in fact, today we have four glands, three chargers, two mounts, two vans, and a 10% discount code at Transporter HQ. That seemed like a good idea. And now I've got to pick it all up. So full disclosure, when I say that Scanstrut saw my video and loved it and wanted to send me all of these items to show you guys, what I really mean is Scanstrut did see my video and they did love it. And then I hounded them and said, please send me all of the stuff that's camper van related, because if any of the other stuff is as good as that cable gland that I showcased, then yes, you guys are going to love it. First up, we have the DSH10. We're not going to call it that. We will probably, us, me and you, we'll always call this a single. This is a single cable gland, goes up to about 10 mil, ideal for something like a light bar or a larger wire, one single larger wire. Down below in the description, you will see the chapters. If you think that you've seen enough of one item, feel free to use those chapters to navigate directly onto the next item. This gasket is your template. We will lay this on the place on the van or the boat or the yacht where you want your cable gland. That is your template. We draw around that. 25 mil hole in the middle, 2.5 mil pilot hole on each corner. You get that drilled out and you will end up with something like this. You wanna clean them edges up with a deburrer or a file. You wanna make good the paint, or not it be hammer eye or a bit of primer, spray paint, whatever you choose. Make sure that this is protected by the weather, even though it should never get wet. So we're gonna peel our gasket back and we're gonna stick that over the area like that. And with the screw supplied, screw that down in each corner. Now it's time to choose your seal, your cable seal itself. You get all these different sizes. The best thing to do is to choose the one that is snug on your cable. It don't want to be too tight. It don't want to be too loose. I also love the fact that they send a blank. So if you are fitting one of these cable glands, knowing that you're going to need one in the future, or you're fitting a double, but at the time of installation, you're only using one of those ports, you can blank it off. These are directional. Hopefully you can see that, but they are slightly domed. You want the tapered side, the most narrow, the smallest to be in the back of the scan strut itself. That's snug enough that it's taken a bit of effort to move it along the wire. Not too loose, not too tight. I think that's perfect. Hopefully you can see, but that seal there, just nestling itself into the plastic body angle that piece of plastic on it does take a bit of effort but there's almost a sense of security in the fact that that is a tight fit phillips screw provided probably better off using a screwdriver so you get a real feel but that there is one waterproof cable seal I'm pulling that I'm not the world's strongest man but i am that doesn't move, that does not move. And what I love about this, this is the reason why I did it on a dummy board. As you can see here, I haven't cleaned this edge up because this is, again, for display purposes only. But the scan strut itself forces the wire through the center of this hole. So you cannot, this cannot, it literally will not, no matter what I do, touch this cut edge. Absolutely fantastic. Those plastic ones that we've used in the past, there's no telling when that wire goes down through whether or not it's actually rubbing against the metal work of the body. Awful. This is the DSHD6. We're not going to call it that. We're going to call it the double cable gland, the double seal. This is perfect for solar or two wires of any variety, but it does not go up to the same size as the single. This goes up to a six mil cable. So if you did have two nine mil cables for example you would be better off using two of the single glands and then i found this this is the ds hd 10 me and you we're going to call this a big double this will allow two cables ranging from six mil right up to 10 mil i know for a fact that this double is good for solar cables because I previously fitted one that's how i found the scan strut originally i fitted a double and a single 
and the double was used for solar. It just so happens for some reason, I don't know if it's a bigger gauge, but my solar wires, because they're gonna be used in my workshop, they are closer to 7.6 mil. I just double checked on my vernier calipers. So double check your cable sizes, choose the correct gland. What I failed to mention is it's obviously good for anything like this. So if you're sending power up, when I say power up, you're sending it up to your roof for anything like cameras, light bars, any additional power setups, anything like that, it works well with the flat cable. So this is your standard two core protected in plastic cable and that works an absolute treat. I'm gonna show you another cable gland, but this is definitely not a cable gland video. DS16P, we're gonna call this a one wire dome looking thing. This does do between a two and an eight mil cable and will allow a 16 mil pass through. So I didn't realize that, but that there, that max means if your cable had a head on it, like a fixed factory head that you don't want to cut or splice, this will allow a 16 mil pass through by the look of that, that's quite clever. I've just read the manufacturer's opinion and I don't ever advise doing that. Watch my videos and that's how you learn. But this isn't what I thought it was. I just called this a one wire because it comes with these little bungs in different sizes, a one wire wonder, which is great. If you had an electric hookup outside to inside, that would be absolutely cracking. And also what's good about this is it's got a split in the rubber. So if it had a chunky fitting on it, it will go up to 16 mil, like I just said, you wrap that around, and that will still allow you to seal it. But what I didn't realize is this bung here, and that is a bung to begin with. If you knew that you were going to want one of these on the underside of your van, but you weren't ready to put a wire through it, you would basically use that bung and that would seal it up from all the elements in the interim. But if you had multiple cables, so for example, ding, water gauges and gas gauges, which are usually almost like speaker wire coming from your tanks from outside to inside, you can drill multiple holes in there. Now in the instructions, it says, put this in the freezer, that bung in there, put that in the freezer, that will go nice and hard. And then, and then that will allow you to drill that multiple times. And then when you close that down, it seals it up. So you could have one, two or three going through that. Absolutely cracking. That this isn't the cheapest way by any stretch of the imagination to bring wires up through your van. But if you're gonna get three, cables say three speaker wire water gauge that kind of thing up through here that is absolutely perfect and when someone looks under your van and they see that you've done that and not some other kind of creation they're going to love you for it this is the ds multi p and we would actually me and you we would probably call this the multi so that, that is the one that has the name that makes the most sense as far as me and you are concerned but here we are this as the title probably gives away, is a multi. So a bit like the other one, which would allow one, two or three smaller cables, this will allow up to four cables up to 15 mil. So that would be, for example, like the larger Arctic cable, because that is quite a sizable wire. And you've not heard it from me, but I can't see why your gas line, if you had gas in a bottle on the outside of your van, that has to come up through the body of the vehicle at some point. This is waterproof, it's sturdy, it's safe. You haven't heard it from me because I don't understand the full regulations. So I might have once been gas safe, but not on camper vans. So why can't you bring it all up through there? So if you have a cluster of wires that need to come up through on the underside or out the top of your van, if you want to go down the route of a couple of solar wires, your light bar, all under one roof, that's too good. Use one of these. I probably, as far as the roof is concerned, would prefer to use a multiple amount of the more streamlined ones, which end up with the wires facing that way, because the only thing to bear in mind is the wires will come out the top. Let's go take a look. So you guessed it, installation is exactly the same. There's your foam gasket, which is also your template. I'm gonna put that on there. And while installation is the same, because it really is, the only thing that you've got to decide for yourself is whether or not you want to drill multiple holes, make sure they're larger than the cable, 
multiple holes in here, or if you want to drill a hole at each end and then elongate it with a jigsaw, protect the paint, that kind of thing, totally up to you. You can either cut a letterbox or multiple holes. Now for me, because it's for display purposes only and I haven't got my jigsaw out here, I am basically going to drill a couple of holes for you guys. At this stage you drill the seal as many holes as you need to the correct diameter as soon as you close that frame down around the outside that will seal it shut proof that this is not just a cable gland video i now have three different charges to show you all from scanstrut two of them are external one of them is internal and wireless three different applications three different installations choose your favorite have all three doesn't matter let's go Let's start with the Rock Wireless 10 Watt phone charger. That is probably what we would call it. Sealed IPX waterproof unit. So while you probably could use this externally, so that makes my previous little intro into this incorrect, but I'm not redoing it. If you are here watching this video, the chances are the algorithm has brought you over here because you like camper vans and camping and things like that. We probably aren't going to use this outside it has no purpose for us outside it's nice that it is waterproof because if you're using it next to your kitchen sink mounted to a worktop then that is fantastic but we are probably going to mount this inside somewhere like on a kitchen worktop in a little nook and cranny where you throw your phone and it just charges it as a bit of a byproduct, which is cool. Or even I've seen people mount them in the top of the pop top so in the roof of the pop top Nice and flat, doesn't take up any space. You put your phone on there and it starts charging it. Anywhere you've got a flat surface, you just put your phone on top like that and it starts charging. Let's get it fitted. This is one of the easiest installs ever because it's two wires, which is a positive and a negative and a 65 mil hole. This couldn't be simpler, 65 mil hole. And yes, a 64 mil hole does work. Absolutely awesome. Free M tape on the back. We would simply peel this off, push it through the hole, stick that down. Once this is finished, I will wire each charger up and show you exactly how they work. The second charger on the list is the Charge Pro. It's had a little squiz at this and it's absolutely lovely. So it ends up with a USB-A and a USB-C in there waterproof while in use so this is going to be different to the flip that i'm going to show you in a minute when you put your wires into here and close this lid down that is waterproof while it's in use because that has a rubber gasket on it and it shuts the wires will come out here waterproof while in use that is awesome hole big enough here for the unit to pass through pilot hole there for a fixing point you would usually then stick that gasket down just like before, pass our unit through, and then on the back, you get a nut. Access would be needed on the back side because that is your fixing nut. You would open it, pilot hole in the center there, and that then is fitted, ready for a positive and minus. And guess what? It says positive and minus on the back. They leave nothing to the imagination. Simple. Welcome to the Flip Pro. This also has a USB-A and a USB-C. It's a sleeker design, not waterproof while in use. Because to use it, you need to flip that lid up. I wonder how they came up with the name flip, which would then expose the connection and therefore that would not be good. But in the closed position, this is actually waterproof. This is even simpler to install than the Pro Charge because there's one less pilot hole. Drill a hole, push it back, nut on the back, Done, let's go. This is likely to be on a flat surface, like a worktop or a cubby hole or a dashboard. This can be used anywhere. Yes, it can be used inside, but it definitely can be used outside. So for me, having so many things set up at the rear, a water point, a gas point, so I cook there, I clean there, having this in that vicinity over there on the outside of the van would be absolutely perfect. I mean, it looks fantastic. I've got far worse things bolted to the outside of my van than this it looks absolutely great but you could have it anywhere you could have it as you open the side door of your van it sat there ready to charge things to light up your awnings absolutely fantastic now these the flip a little bit smaller a little bit more discreet once again can be used outside when it is in use 
is no longer waterproof. Please appreciate that. For me, in truth, in all honesty, these charge points are some of the nicest versions of a USB charger on the market. I would have these on display in my van. These are the nicest looking USB chargers that I've seen. And yes, this one requires you to push a button and lift that up. That's how it seals. It's a bit serious, don't get me wrong. But this one, on the inside of your van, why not? Why not have every single USB port on the inside of your van look that good? Because to be honest, the other versions that are out there, they're not all that. It's used to charge pro. Basically, all you do is push down hard on there. That unlocks it. It actually flips up. That's really, really good. Insert your USB and we're charging. That genuinely is the first time I've ever put a USB in the correct way first time. And then shut that. Now, when that's shut, that gasket there seals that. So that is totally waterproof. So you could be using this on the outside of your van for an awning light, for example, and not concerned if it did rain, that water would then start to ingress. Once again, once this is in the open position, it is no longer waterproof rated. And that is it, simple. A lot more discreet, more sleek, but not waterproof when in use. Don't need to say anything more about that. These are the last two items on the list, and these are the items that I push ScanStruck for the most. So let's start with the screwed mount. You would probably be fixing this to timber somewhere in your van, but for this video, let's fit it to our board. One, two, three, four screws, and guess what? It's done. That clips on there like that. So side on now, so you guys can see, you press this button, that releases. So you could have these dotted about everywhere, solid as a rock, and then you get to choose whatever you want to mount to this. So I'm going to fit my mobile phone on there. Remember, this is the first time I've seen these products myself. So this is like a double knuckle joint. So as soon as you crack that, it can turn that way. And also that top head can spin. So you can pretty much orientate it any way you like. And I do know that they sell extensions for that as well. So if you are too close to a different surface, for example, you can knuckle it out of the way. But look, that square there is ready to take our fix in. Can I do all of this one handed? Just drop that in there like that. It's like the Blair Witch. Absolutely splendiferous. Check that out. So now we crank that. This is all one-handed, by the way, guys. Don't judge me now. There's too many moving parts, but look at that. <laughs> you got to love that. you got to. That's probably not the best camera angle, but my dear old dog sat on the driver's seat, and he takes priority over all of us. Peel that off the back, which just keeps that clean, and then remove it first because the suction lever gets in the way of itself. So choose where you want it to go. I'm gonna give it a good push. Oh yeah. And that is all she wrote. Cracking, what a bit of kit. Look at it. And this, in fact, is the gold. Dun, dun, dun. Excuse the mess, a YouTuber's life. You then pick up any mount that you've already got. They're interchangeable. You get all kinds of different mounts. So I have got the suction for the windscreen or a tabletop, that kind of thing. And I've also got the screw down version. I picture having this for an iPad. When the pop top is open, you're basically looking at a flat screen TV. Please buy merch or buy me a coffee or buy anything to support her habit. I can't get over how much stuff there is and there just isn't a rucksack. She wants a rucksack, a rucksack, a rucksack. Make money, money, make money, money, money! But if your dad hasn't got a beard, you've got two mums. Do 
So I've got the panel there from where the pop top was fitted. These little bases, the little ones that you screw on, they're only cheap, they're disposable money and they're really, really discreet. So you could have them planted about all over the place knowing that you can go from here to there with all the different varieties. I will put the links in the description below. I am about to order using my own UAO 10. Go to Transporter HQ, UAO10. That will get you 10% discount off of any ScanStruck product. So that is all the chargers, all of the glands, any of these mounts. I'll put a link in the description to the exact kits that I have fitted today. If you want anything off of the beaten track, you may need to reach out to ScanStruck themselves because they have a mount for pretty much everything.